Information tracking software allows large amounts of data to be collected where advertisers or other outsiders can access weeks or months of personal information. They can store information such as location, photos, emails, web history, shopping cart contents, search terms, and so much more. Our argument is that information tracking is unethical. It is unethical by the standards of deep ecology as applied to HTML5. While there is definitely a need for certain forms of information tracking and a number of both pros and cons on its usage, the practice is unethical from a moral standpoint. The data that is being recorded and stored from users can be considered sensitive information and is at a huge risk to the person's privacy and even to their identity. Although it could potentially be used to track down hackers and terrorists, it can fall into the wrong hands and open up a whole new set of security problems that the average internet user would not be able to fully comprehend, let alone combat. In a New York Times article titled New Web Code Draws Concern Over Privacy Risks, the author says, in the next few years, a powerful new suite of capabilities will become available to web developers that could give marketers and advertisers access to many more details about computer users' online activities. Nearly everyone who uses the internet will face the privacy risks that come with those capabilities, which are an integral part to the web language that will soon power the internet. HTML5. As Pam Dixon, the executive director of the World Privacy Forum in California said, HTML5 opens Pandora's box of tracking on the internet. Deep Ecology studies the interdependent relationship between all things in the world, both living and non-living. For the purpose of this project, our non-living topic of discussion is technology, and the technology we are questioning is information tracking. The Vol and Sessions, two philosophers, questioned the compatibility of technology with the growth of autonomous, self-determining individuals in non-hierarchical communities. The Vol and Sessions view technology as a central institution and propose seven questions as guidelines to evaluate technology. If the answer to these seven questions is that information tracking is unethical, then information tracking as envisioned under HTML5 is also unethical. Question number one, does this technology device serve vital needs? If it is used properly, information tracking serves the vital need of safety. In this following video, investigative journalist Metzen discusses how it can help national security and decrease crime, but it is also an abuse of power if our information is given to a third party. However, it also invades the vital need of privacy and adds to society's invasive behaviors. Technology Review, a blog by MIT, discusses a new form of malware. Instead of tracking traditional demographic information, the new malware will be able to track behavior patterns, how often someone makes a phone call, sends an email, and ultimately map out a person's entire network. This new form will be more valuable to marketers because an email address associated with an individual who is at the hub of a vibrant social network is clearly more valuable to a marketing company than an email address at the edge of the network. Also, if traditional malware steals your password, you can just change it. If the new malware steals information about how often you email your best friend, it is not that easy to change your behavior. Question number two. Is this device or system of the sort that can be immediately understood by non-experts? Definitely not. Here is a tutorial to illustrate what someone must go through to prevent information tracking. A person who does not know how to use a computer would not be able to block his settings and prevent malware from infesting his computer and stealing his information. The MIT blog also mentions that the new class of malware will be untraceable. Even a computer literate person will have difficulty getting rid of it. Question number three. Does it have a high degree of flexibility and mutability, or does it impose a permanent, rigid, irreversible imprint on the lives of citizens? We have decided that it imposes a permanent, rigid, irreversible imprint on the lives of citizens. We are unaware that a third party has access to our information, and once they have access to that information, we do not know what they plan on doing with it. We are unable to retrieve it and exercise control over it once it is out of our hands, even though it is our information. For example, Google and Facebook track our information and violate internet privacy by selling our information to marketers. Question number four. 
Does this technological device or system foster greater autonomy of local communities or greater dependency on some centralized authority? Instead of creating a greater sense or autonomy of local communities or a greater dependency on a centralized authority, it creates a greater sense of fear of the centralized authority. In this case, it's the marketers and the control they have over access to our information. According to Tavani, author of Informational Privacy, Data Mining, and the Internet, marketers often collect users' personal data without their direct knowledge and have no obligation to explain how that data will be used in the future. Question number five. Is this device or system ecologically destructive or conducive to a deep ecology way of life? Information tracking is neither ecologically destructive nor conducive. The marketers who are getting all of our information become more invasive. They have control of our information and they can decide what to do with it, whether they want to oversaturate us with advertisements or sell the information to a third party. They are preventing the internet from being a free flow of information. According to Bush, researcher of ethics and marketing on this internet, 44% of advertisers and agency personnel rarely consider ethics when developing internet marketing strategies. Our best interests are not always being considered when it comes to information tracking. Question number six. Does this device or system enhance the individuality of persons or does it lead to bureaucratic hierarchies? We have decided that it leads to bureaucratic hierarchies because it is giving our private information to a select group of people. It has become so problematic that there are national organizations that are against tracking and are fighting to protect internet privacy. Some examples of these organizations are EPIC, the Electronic Privacy Information Center, and ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. Question 7. Does this device or system encourage people to behave and think like machines? Yes, it is attempting to shorten the thought process that an average consumer would go through and attempting to increase impulse decisions. They are doing this by using targeted advertisements and infiltrating our free thought processes. It dictates our behaviors. Now that you have learned about information tracking and its dangers since our privacy rights are being violated, what is going to be done? The FTC, otherwise known as the Federal Trade Commission, has proposed that steps need to be taken in order to protect the rights of consumers more efficiently and thoroughly than they have thus far. Stricter regulations could help prevent the exploitation of consumer information and rights. Although the solution has not been settled upon yet because Democrats and Republicans have yet to agree on the immediate importance of consumer privacy, Congress has unanimously agreed that there is not enough of an effort on most companies' parts to protect their consumers. One solution that the FTC has proposed is the implementation of a do-not-track option that should be built in on most internet browsers. Should the consumer choose to activate the no-tracking option, the data tracking of their internet activity will be fully customizable and users can pick and choose which sites they trust with their information, if any. Based on our deep ecological analysis of information tracking through Duvall's session's seven questions for evaluating technology, we have shown that information tracking is unethical. Because of the potential misuse of the information being tracked and the harm that would be experienced by anyone who falls victim to this sort of privacy exploitation, this process is an unethical practice. While there are pros to tracking this sort of information, they are far outweighed by negative possibilities.